Okay, today's show is all about cheating, which is a topic that I already know you're going to be into because we've been polling our audiences here over the last few days, and we found that 90% of the people who come to see the show cheat. Now, our first guest would say that that means that the other 10% of you are lying. Michael, you admit that you basically cheated your way through college, is that right? Sure, more or less, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, give me some examples of what, what kind of cheating did you do? Um, well, when the need arose, I just basically improvised. If uh, for whatever reason I didn't have uh, my studying done for a test, I'd go in and figure out a way to get the answers. Um, now, did you do it because it was like a, a shortcut, or did you do it, was, was there sort of a thrill involved? Uh, there was definitely some of both, but uh, I'd say during college I was pretty lazy, so it was much more of a shortcut for me. Okay, because I was wondering if it's sort of like, because, um, I mean, you're not dumb, I can tell that. I talked to you a little bit before the show, so it wasn't like you absolutely had to. I, that was a nice thing that I just said. You guys are acting like I dissed him. But that, you, so it wasn't like you had to cheat to get by. You could have, you could have studied, learned the stuff, and gotten sure. pretty good grades. Uh-huh. Because I, I was wondering if it's sort of like, um, like shoplifting when you actually have the money or something, if there is sort of a charge you get from it. There's definitely a thrill to it, and when you're able to pull it off, you know, it, you have bragging rights and, uh, and so forth, but, uh, you know, I certainly have plenty of interesting stories from it, so uh, there's definitely a thrill to it. Okay, and, and you knew a lot of other people who cheated too, right? It oh, wasn't yeah. just you. Oh, yeah. All your friends and... Mm hmm Okay. Mm hmm Do you think... What do you think about this theory that people who cheat in college would be more likely to then cheat out in the real world? Whatever real world means, I don't know, but... Yeah, I mean... When they I, get out of college. I've always been interested by people saying that cheating is wrong when, uh, you know, the semantics of it, people who say that cheating in college is wrong go right out into the real world and do the exact same things. Cut corners, um... Use their resources yeah. to their advantages, lie on resumes, mm -hmm. uh, find out inside information about a company that might need somebody for a job, uh, have a connection at a company. And you think that that stuff is okay to do? Why not? No if it problem gets you the job, I mean, it's a means to an end. But some of that stuff, what about like cheating on your taxes and stuff? There when it gets illegal, I mean, is that when is it that gets a illegal for you? and uh, trying to figure out your boundaries here? You start dealing with the government like that, I kind of shy away from that. Okay. Well, back in school, give us just a couple of examples of ways that you cheated. Um, well, French was always something that was real difficult for me. Um, never had any aptitude for it whatsoever. So there was one French class. I knew the teacher was real lenient. Um, I would not show up on test days. And I knew by doing this a couple times, all I had to do was go in, tell her that I missed the test and she would give me the test to take home and do. Mm-hmm. I mean... Pretty trusting. After yeah. once or twice, I figured this was the way to get through the semester, so I kept taking the tests home, had my friend who took the class fill out the test for me, and got through it like a B or a B plus. <laughs> now, um, this audience doesn't seem too shocked, because I have a feeling a lot of you guys have done some of this kind of stuff yourself, but, um, but you, you didn't see anything wrong with that, because you figure got me through. It got you through, yeah. and that's the important I thing. I have my degree, yeah. Okay. Now, speaking of, speaking of cheating, I, I'm sure that you guys have all seen that term paper blues ad, you know, that runs in the back of Rolling Stone magazine and places like that. I know, I've seen it. And I've always wanted to know if they really send you a usable term paper. And, well, I guess actually they don't send you a term paper because that would be illegal to sell term paper, so they call it a research report. Whatever. You use it how you want to use it. Um, but uh, let's, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually place a little order uh, to this company <laughs> on the show here, and uh, we're going to see if this method of cheating is as easy as they make it seem in the magazine, in their little ad. Okay. Let's see. Michael, did you ever do this, by the way? Did no. you ever order one of these? No. How come? Too expensive, or what's the problem? Uh, I never really your, looked your into it. Your roommate was cheaper. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I actually looked through it. I was there are a lot of papers I probably could have used out of that book. Okay, let me see. Hang on to uh, hang on to this for me for a second. Sure. Okay. Let's see. Three, one. Oh. Did you um did you ever get caught cheating by the way? Um, no. No. 
And you never did get caught. Okay. Never did get caught. No. What I about, what about your friends who cheated? Did any of them ever get caught? Um, no, not that I can remember. No, my school was pretty uh, blind about that. Um, yeah, I'm trying to reach. Um, one sec, I'll get right back to you. I'm trying to reach Bart Lowe. Yes, this is Bart Lowe speaking. Hi, Bart. Uh, this is Jane Pratt calling. Oh, hi. Hi. Um, and I was actually wondering. You're the you're the owner of this company called um, Research Assistance. That's yeah. That's what yes. you call. Okay, you got. How long have you guys been around? How long have you been in business? Been in business uh, twenty two years. For twenty two years. Yeah, started in nineteen seventy. So it's pretty successful business, huh? Yeah, we've been successful. Has it been booming, increasing, like more? Yeah, we're in fact more so with fax machines now. We're international. We're doing a lot of <laughs> business overseas, the Middle East, uh, Europe, uh -huh. Asia, Hong Kong. Oh, yeah. oh wow! So you oh so you do these things in all different languages and everything. We don't do it in different languages. They uh, they either ad adapt it to their language, uh, but what it is is it's either you know a library of information. We have every topic from anthropology to zoology, and everything in between. And you do some you you sort of do some like custom made ones for people too, yes, right? Like yes. they call you up. What are some of the weirder ones, weirder orders that you've gotten? Oh gee, uh, some of the weirder orders would be. In fact, in your field, we did a, uh, did a paper on life and career of Geraldo Rivera. Uh, maybe one day uh, we'll, we'll add you to the catalog, too. Oh, how nice. So, uh, Actually, I'd like to read that Geraldo one. Well, Could you send me a copy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you like that? We'll send that one to you. That'd be great. But you know what I really want now? There's this one that my producer um, found for me before. Uh, can I order this number, 14153? Lying and nonverbal behavior. One four one five three. It kind of fits in with my topic today that I am okay. dealing with. Okay. This assignment that's due by the end of the hour is right. what I'm saying. So you can uh, you can fax that to me here. Yes, I can. And you've got the number and everything. Got the number. Mm -hmm. Okay. So go ahead and fax it. But you know, it's as I said, it's due in an hour. So you got to get it to us soon. Okay. Okay, and we'll take a look at it. All right. Okay. We'll, we'll get that to you. Okay, that uh, research report. Yeah. Right. Uh huh. Okay, thanks, Bart. Okay, Jane. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you. When we come back, <laughs> you're going to find out what happened to a college football player who got caught cheating. You'll uh, get to read that uh, research report with me. And you will meet a girl who used to be what some of you might call a snitch. Jane Pratt, sponsored by Cool Mint Listerine Antiseptic. Okay, we're back with Jimmy here, who got caught cheating at Stanford during his freshman year, and Donna, who's actually proud of the fact that she used to turn in people like him. Well, wait a minute, you haven't heard her whole story yet. Give her, give her a chance before you do that. <laughs> Uh, Jimmy, what? First of all, what did you get? Uh, what did you cheat on, and how'd you get caught? Um, I cheated on a uh, civil engineering uh, take-home extra credit assignment, and uh, at the end of the at the end of the quarter, I was called in to talk to my instructor, and he asked me, or more or less, kind of asked me, accused me of it, and I thought it was such a minor infraction. I thought there was no hurt, and I admitted to it. Um, at which he turned it over to uh, judicial affairs, and through a whole process, I was uh, suspended for a quarter. What's the usual, so this is at Stanford, right? Yes, yes. What's the usual policy there with that? Would, would being suspended for, for a semester, would that be pretty standard for something like this? Or? They call it the usual punishment for a violation of the honor code is a, a quarter um, suspension. But they don't make any uh, a difference between um, an extra credit assignment or necessarily a final exam. Okay, and you're also, you're big into sports, right? Not, it was football and... And volleyball. Volleyball. Still are probably, I guess. Yes. Yeah. A and what happened with those? Did that, did that mess well, up your when you're sports career? You have a year uh, of which to pick one of three quarters in the next year to be suspended. And um, I chose spring quarter, so I missed uh, the, my, the second half of my volleyball season. And I missed uh, uh, spring football. And then I had to make up. You're not allowed to take any units whatsoever transferable during that quarter. So I was ineligible to play football next year, so I had to go to summer school to get the... Uh, the extra five units I needed to be able to, to play. So it really messed you up. 
this yeah, whole I had, thing. I had a tough summer. Yeah. Did uh, do you feel like it was too harsh the punishment? Um, in retrospect, I, I appealed. I appealed um, the recommendation by the ju judicial affairs officer to the president. I wrote him a letter and said, you know, being that I'm a freshman, um, it's such a I, I, what I felt was a, a minor infraction, an extra credit assignment. It was not an exam, but I felt that um, th the the punishment was too harsh and that something minor, maybe no credit in the class um, and a probationary period would be more appropriate. Okay, what do you think about his punishment? Do you think it was too harsh or what? Well, how did you cheat? What, how did they catch you? Okay, well, there was one problem that uh, a friend of mine and I both had that no one else in the class of about really 200 people had. So it was, looking back, it was a, a very bad luck that I actually got caught. But, um, so we had the same answer that was different from anyone else and he called us both in and I admitted to, that I had copied the other gentleman's work. So do you feel like based on this and all this harsh punishment you got and everything, do you feel like you learned your lesson? Would you not cheat again? Um, I, I really think I learned that it's, it's not worth it. After all, I went through for one problem on extra credit assignment, which I turned out um, not even needing. I ended up doing well in the final. Um, so I, I think the, 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 you know, the circumstances, under the circumstances I kind of had panic because I hadn't done so well in the midterm and I felt like I really needed this extra credit assignment. Okay, but, but bottom line is would you ever cheat again? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a tough one. Um, it may sound bad, but I know now if I were to cheat, how to cheat and not get caught. Oh, so you didn't learn the lesson that they wanted you to learn. This is like an audience well, full of cheaters I'd, today. I'd like, okay. I'd like, like to say that um, because of my whole experience, I, have, I do have other friends, athletes and non-athletes, who have come to me who are in similar situations and have asked my advice on how to deal with this. And based on my experience, well, I told the truth and I still got punished for it. And I have a lot of, I had, when I was a freshman, there were seniors who were telling me, just deny the whole thing, deny the whole thing, they can't prove it. I said, well, you know, I'm going to be honest and tell the truth. Um, so now, pe people come to me now and say, you know, what do I do? And I say, hey, you know, nine, nine times out of ten, if you deny it, they can't prove it. So I, I tell people to deny it. Okay, this whole audience seems to be with you on that. They were all, before you even said it, they were all like, deny it. Why'd you tell the truth? What do you think? Well, I have a question for Mike. I don't understand. Um, you went through your whole college career, you say, cheating. I guess that was carried over from high school also. Yeah. Somewhat. Well, what are you going to... He's, what, been he's a lifelong cheater. Yeah, okay. sure, sure. And I can understand yeah. having to get by by doing that sometimes, not that I've done it necessarily, but what no, I'm curious no. is when, when, no. you're, when people see this show, like your parents or whoever, prospective employers, um, what are they going to think and what, how are you going to respond to them if they see you? Uh... Who, parents or prospective parents employers? It's a good anyone? question. Are you proud of this? Do you, do you mind if people know about it? No, obviously, I don't mind. Apparently I'm coming not. on here talking about it. Um, I mean, I've been able to use what was at my fingertips and get me to where I needed to go to. I mean, I think it shows resourcefulness. He's, he's proud of it. Okay, well, you know, Donna. And just, just like uh, Jim just said before, he learned something out of that. So whether Stanford meant to or not, they taught him something. Deny it next time. <laughs> taught him how to cheat a little better next yeah. time, maybe. You know. Donna, what do you think about the punishment that Jimmy got? Do you think that it was, it was too harsh or not harsh enough? For the punishment for him having to go? Yeah, out. having to be, getting kicked out for a whole semester and having all his whole sports stuff messed up and everything. Right. Well, um, I agree with it to a certain extent. I know at the school that I attended, if he had come forth and said that he did something wrong, if he had admitted it, he would not have been kicked out because they believed that a student that came forth um, was being honorable in that sense. So I had a different experience. So at, at our school, that probably would not you have go, happened. You go to um, University of Virginia? Right. Okay. And you were, tell us what you were, you were the head of the I honor committee. I was the chairman there. of the honor committee. Okay. What, um, <laughs> this audience, they're not the most honest audience I've ever had, but um, so what did you do in that role? Basically, um, I handled cases that came for, forward. Students, random students at the university, um, if they saw a student, student, another student lie, cheat, or steal, they would turn the student into the honor system. The honor system would investigate it, and if they felt it was serious enough to warrant permanent dismissal and felt that one of the acts had occurred, then um, they would come forward and go to trial, and I oversaw, I oversaw the whole process. What made you want to get involved in that? Um, one of the first reasons I got involved is because um, it actually had to do with the disproportionate number of minority students that were being brought up. Um, so that was one of the issues that I had to begin with. And also because I believe very strongly in, um, in having some type of ethical standard in the community.
Okay. Did you, it, sometimes it must have been pretty bad scenes when you were actually having to kick students out. Right. Because the, how, how many students did you, were you responsible for getting the, kicked out over that, over the four years? Um, last year, which was the year that I was the chairman, we had uh, about 80 cases that came through. About 30 of those people um, actually went to trial. 18, uh, approximately 18 of them, um, excuse me, about approximately 18 of them went to trial out of the 30, and the other 12 left admitting guilt. Okay, so th that must, it must have made you feel kind of bad uh, to have to do that sometimes. I mean, it was difficult. It was yeah. certainly difficult. Okay. Okay, we're going to talk to you more about it when we come back. We'll be back with more cheating stories, like the one about the girl whose life has never been the same since she turned in three kids for cheating on the SATs. We'll be right back. about cheating in college but during the break Samantha here who goes to Hunter College High School in New York told me that there's even cheating to get into college Samantha come here a sec tell me what what kind of cheating um, did have you seen in your school well um, some people get approached to take the SATs like for other people mm -hmm. not myself because I do horribly in the SATs <laughs> but <laughs> so you've never been approached with that no, never had to I worry about it <laughs> okay but why would I can understand why someone might want someone else who might do better to take them for them but why would it why would a good student want to go and and take the SATs for someone else are they getting paid for it or what like a hundred dollars you know to like a lot of money and also it's it, it may mean it might not be perceived as so much of a moral issue because I mean obviously it's a moral issue but it's like you're you're the smart one. You're not you're not the one who's cheating in a way. Even though you are partaking, participating in the cheating extravaganza, you're not cheating. <laughs> you know, cheating extravaganza. That kind of like describes our audience today. Um, okay. So um, now this is. Um, have you ever you've known about this, but have you ever like reported it or anything like that? Um, no, you haven't. How come? Well, I, first of all, I mean I would have to like prove it or something and also I think um I've read in Rolling Stone as you mentioned <laughs> a lot of things that I don't think that the SAT people the people who make them really care about cheating they just care about the scores I read about this whole thing like a cheating ring that ETS knew about the SAT people mm -hmm. and they didn't do anything okay and perfect lead in to my next guest thank you co-host um Rebecca you did turn in uh some some people for cheating on the SATs yeah Okay. You guys are already going, mmm, like she shouldn't have done it. This audience is so slanted. Hang on. Hang on. Rebecca, tell, tell us uh, what happened. Basically, in my junior year of high school, I was taking my SATs, and um, I witnessed three of my friends um, before the friends. Before yes, friends. One honest person in this audience before the end of the hour. I'm determined. Go ahead. And before the test, um, they looked through the booklet, and um, all of a sudden I saw the three of them running up to the front of the room, um, grabbing dictionaries, uh, yelling out words. Wasn't there like, was there a teacher or proctor, proctor or somebody was in there? there? She just watched. What was she taking a nap? What was she doing? No, she, was, she, she didn't was, care. She just sat there and watched. Okay. Um, the other students just sat there and watched likewise. Um, I, I was really disgusted by the matter. I talked to people afterwards, and you know, they said, "You know, who, who cares? Why, why do you care so much?" Um, I eventually, uh, that Monday, took the the matter to a teacher that I liked and trusted, and um, it went to the administration, who did not believe me. In fact, they told me, "You know, Rebecca, I'm sure you believe with all your heart that this happened, but you know, the fact of the matter is, these boys wouldn't do something like that." Um, I was basically swept under the rug. It went to ETS. Um, there was never a full investigation. Um, I wasn't believed. So I nobody really helped. Nobody really helped you out. And they're glad about it. Hold on. Hold on. These. 
I mean, people back here are saying, oh, she turned them in because she was worried that they were going to do better than her or something like that. Tell, tell me, explain, and everybody listen to her explanation. Why, why did you do it? Why did you feel like you had to turn them in? Um, I can't put a stain in all this. I, I've done some cheating in high school, but it took... <laughs> so have all of you. It, Come on, you guys. It took okay. an incident like this to make me realize how far things had gone. Um, that it really had gone to where these people had stepped over the line. That, that because people, because it was because it was the SATs. You felt it was the SATs are more important. Um, definitely, I think they're a very important test. But um, I think that people would have the gall to so blatantly cheat on the SATs, this national examination that has weighed so heavily in colleges. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was sick. Well, let me ask you, do you think that, I mean, if someone cheats, obviously there's the potential that they could get hurt by it if they get caught mm -hmm. or whatever, or if they tell the truth like Jimmy did over here. But if, wh can they hurt other people? Or, I mean, why did you feel like it was your role to go and, and turn them in? You know, it wasn't really hurting you, was it? It could, if um, their scores were high enough that it could outweigh mm -hmm. the, uh, the averages could be offset. Okay. But... Okay. Mainly, it, it, wasn't it wasn't about everybody else. It was about myself. Uh -huh. I felt that if I was to stay quiet and not do something about it, it would be because I was afraid of the social repercussions and afraid what everybody would think of me. And um, honestly, if I had stayed quiet over that, okay. I would have had no self-respect. Okay. Hang, hang on a sec, you guys, because this actually, were you traumatized by it? Very much so. You were. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Okay, tell me a little bit about that. What, what happened at this period in your life? And I want you guys to just, you know, be a little sensitive here. What, what happened? Um, well, needless to say, people did not react too kindly to that. Um, I lost the strong majority of my friends, friends I'd had since um, kindergarten, 10 years or so. Mm -hmm. um, my best friend was more than willing to lie um, for the cheaters against me because she said, you know, I know you're doing the right thing, but I'm sorry, I'm just not strong enough. Um, I eventually became anorexic, and I can't attribute all of that to this incident, but um, it definitely triggered that. Though it, it was irrational, my thoughts were, you know, okay, I've lost all my friends, I'll just lose a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. And um, it set me right off into an eating disorder. Okay, would you do it again if you were, if you were back in that situation and you had to do it over again? Um, in retrospect, yeah, because I, I really learned a lot from it, and I think it made me a lot stronger person. Okay. Donna, I bet you can back her on this a little bit. Can you? Um, I mean, you probably get the kind of reaction that she's getting from this audience. You, you probably get that a lot yourself. Um, I don't get it as often. I deal, I've dealt with um, students that basically were having the same types of problems. Once you turn in a, another student, you know, one of your peers, it's quite difficult. So um, we had to do a lot of counseling on that side. Not only did we counsel the people that turned in, but also the people that were turned in. Okay. One real quick question. Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, for the, for the girl who uh, turned in you know, the SAT people, I mean, it might have bothered you a lot. It might have really, you know, caused problems for yourself. But if you hadn't turned them in, I mean, it wasn't going to affect the score of the SATs. It's so, it's the curve is so broad with the SATs that, you know, you you turning in three people in a class. But it would have affected me. If well, I had stayed quiet, it would have been because I was too afraid well, to deviate from the group. I mean, you lost your friends. You're anorexic. I mean. <laughs> oh, I don't want laughing about anorexia here. Come on. Okay, but let me ask you something. What about the principal? Forget the curve and all that stuff. What about the principal? I mean, of course, I'm not, I mean, I would never cheat on the SATs. It's not something I would do. But, I mean, the fact of the matter is that you turning people in is really not going to affect it. And you should have just made sure that, you know, you were doing your job and, and that was it. I mean, there's nothing you okay. could do. Okay, a lot of people agree with you. When we come back, you're going to meet one of the few people who believed Rebecca at the time. Not that it did her any good. But we'll be right back. all about the way Rebecca's life was derailed after she turned three guys in for cheating on their SATs. And I know a lot of you people in this audience are not on her side, but actually I found someone here who is. Adam, you, uh, you 
how do you know Rebecca? You went to school with her. Yeah, I was the uh, student council president at the school. And, uh, <laughs> and I, okay. at the time, uh, she came to me and said, uh, you know, this is going on, and I've gone to the administration, and no one's helping me. And I went to them also. And the administration in the school just overlooked it. They didn't want to deal with it. And this isn't fair to the students that um, were really working yeah. honestly in the school. Mm -hmm. And you got, you got to think of this also. These students were in the top 10% of the class. They were bright students who didn't need to cheat on the SATs. Mm -hmm. They were people who, if anything, had all the advantage going for them and they had even more. So it were wasn't they, fair. Were they people who had cheated before, do you know? In my opinion, yes. They had, I, I know they had cheated through, all throughout high school. And they didn't need to. They were some bright kids. They, they were sort to. of known for this kind of yeah. thing. What do you think about this, this school? Why do you think the school just chose to overlook it? And, and the ETS also? Because the school had a very good reputation. It still does. It's just that the school, I think, thought this would, be a, would tarnish it. And it did tarnish it even worse because they didn't bring it out. And uh, it was more of the, a new principal wanted to keep... This, the school a certain way. And maybe they, the school was psyched that these kids were going to get good SAT scores because then they could get more kids into Harvard or something like that. I'm just speculating. Maybe. I, I don't know. I think they were just trying to keep the fact that the people did cheat in the first place. They didn't want that to get out. And okay. that's why they, they didn't do anything about it. Okay. Thanks a lot. Question to, to all of you guys. Do you think that there is more cheating in, in better schools? Does that seem to be like the more competitive schools inspire more people to cheat? What do you think, Rebecca? Um, I would say, yeah, judging because um, you have a lot of parents who send their children to these very successful schools, um, putting the idea of success up on a pedestal. Otherwise, you, you have to reach it or else. You have to be successful, and it's pressure like that that can really um, lead a student to cheat. So it's a lot of pressure from the families, too. Because yeah. I, I heard a statistic that the cheating is a lot higher um, among more affluent families mm -hmm. also. And maybe that's, that's where it's coming from. The, the parents are saying to the kids, you have to, you know, you have to make as much money as I do when you get out and have, have, have a very high-powered job and all that Whatever stuff. Whatever it takes, get ahead. Donna, now, okay, we just sort of rehashed what, what happened to Rebecca here. You must have seen some, some stories like this yourself, some families that were really upset when, right. when uh, and, and you said that you've had to counsel a lot of them when you were um, having these right. students we expelled. Had, I mean, there were some situations where a student, perhaps right before... The, and before they were supposed to graduate, were found guilty of an honor offense and did not graduate. So there were some really, um, there were some difficult situations in that terms, and you had to also deal not only with the student but also with the families. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you would, you probably had like crying parents in there pleading or trying to bribe you or anything like that. Um, I never really had any bribes, but I definitely had parents that were really upset and sometimes grandparents in. So Okay. Having seen all that sort of trauma that it caused, why, why do you think this honor system is, is so important? I, I, mean, I questioned that quite a bit during the four years that I was at this school. Um, I just believe it's, it's important for community to have some standards on what they feel is important um, in terms of moral values, ethical values. And I believe that in, it winds up paying off in the future. I don't believe that we would have some of the problems that we do in our country today if people were adhered to a certain ethical standard. Okay. So you think it actually serves these it serves the students better in the future. I, I mean about it, this is where the Ivan Boskis and the Michael Milkins start, you know, right mm -hmm. here. Can I just ask okay. uh, whose ethical standards are you talking about? Right. Actually that's a good question. It's, this is a standard um, the school that I went to was rooted in a ba basic southern gentleman type of sta standard. Mm -hmm. And there are people that are coming out over from different countries that may not um, ascribe to the same values. Or people so, that are coming down from, say, New York. Right. They may not have the <laughs> Right. I mean, really, there are different standards. Oh, you're here with a New York audience. Be careful. Yeah, right. No. <laughs> right. There, I mean, that's true. There are different, there are different um, standards. But when you come to the school, you sign, first of all, when you apply to the school, you must write an essay saying that you are going to abide by the system you have to talk about the, in your essay just to apply to the school. So you know before you get there that this is the standard. Okay. Is it, I'm you, sorry, is there, uh -huh. a, is there a set standard? I mean, um, are there the, specific the, guidelines? Well, it just says that you will not lie, cheat, or steal. And out of those 80 cases that you said were brought up in that one year, what were some of, were there any reasons just because of, of gray area that some of them were dismissed? Yes. And that's basically your judgment? Um, it's a judgment of students that investigated the case. I never, yeah. I, okay. So are you saying, because do you think that when, when the um, punishment is that harsh, you think that it's, uh, there's always the chance that someone is going to get kicked out who shouldn't have actually been kicked out, who maybe yeah, wasn't I mean, actually cheating? I mean, it's, it's where is the line? 
it's, each person has a different uh, definition of what cheating is. Um, I mean, you're saying that you turn these people in because you, you had cheated before in high school, but this, to you, was wrong. I mean, this is, this is what you think and, and is wrong. And what I did was wrong, too, and I'm not denying that. No, no, I, yeah, I'm not saying that okay. either, but there's okay. a line that what seems did you to keep say? moving back and I'd forth. I'd like to know for Mike right there, um, you said you've been cheating all through college, and you've got this degree now. I'd like to know what you're doing with it. Uh, right now, I'm an independent filmmaker. I kind of jump from job to job. You're trying to figure out if his cheating served mm -hmm. him well? Did it pay off cheating? I mean, I, yeah, are you well. successful and making money and... Uh, film industry in New York is not that great, so it's not that steady, but yeah, I make money and the degree definitely helped me. Okay. But do okay. you respect yourself? Do you honestly have any self-respect? Okay, one, one, yeah. after one more real yeah. quick one here. I got a question for Rebecca. I think the only reason um, she turned her friends in for cheating because she didn't benefit from it. That's the only reason. she didn't benefit? Yeah. No. Well, that's not a question, that's a statement, but you guys like it anyway. All right, thanks. When we come back, the author of a book on cheating is going to share some tried and true cheating techniques with you. Not that we're advocating them or anything like that. We will be right back. And this is Michael Moore, who interviewed hundreds of cheaters for his book called Cheating 101. Michael, what are some of the more creative cheating techniques you learned while you were researching your book? More creative? I mean, there's, there, there's so many wild techniques that, you know, I don't think the show's long, <laughs> long enough to uh, Apparently talk about not, it. just judging based on our audience here. But, um, but tell me a couple of the really wild ones. Okay, a couple of the really wild ones. To make it short, it's very complicated, but... Like the the kind of earplugs the Secret Service use, uh -huh. they're uh, you stick in your ear that and your voice is transmitted through your ear canal, so you can talk without putting anything to your mouth and you can just sit in class like that. People can talk to each other from around the classroom, or or. I knew you guys were going to get ideas from this. I knew it. That was somebody, not the idea, but okay. Or somebody can be outside the classroom. It has a quarter mile range. You can go through cement walls and just read from a textbook and you can just okay things like that now um give me one more what's another one uh another one uh that i think is uh you know more psychological is um like uh, the fake makeup test you go and you know this only works in large classrooms say there's 150 200 students you go in um when the professor's giving the test and you take the test physically and then you call the professor and say hey i couldn't make the test can i take you know, can I have a makeup test? And then you come in the next day or two days later. And you already know and all the questions. You have the, yeah, you have the test. You know exactly what's coming at you. Now, tell me the truth. Have you, have you really done these yourself? Is that how you know about them? No. No. You I mean, researched. I, I cheated a little bit uh, my first year of high school, not high school, college, but it was, you know, just your basic primitive method, just staring off the guy <laughs> next to you, things like that. So you really learned these from you really learned these from yeah. other people when you yeah. went to this. Out of all the uh, out of all the students that you talked to, what percentage of them actually cheat? Um, that's I don't know if that's a loaded question or not, but uh, I, I, I mean, for, it's a pretty straightforward. One, I'd say I about eighty percent. Eighty percent of the people I came across cheated at least more than four times during college. Eighty percent. Okay. Yeah. And judging by our audience here, here we have about 99%. But, um, but I wanted to introduce you guys here to, uh, to Don McCabe. Stand up. Now, you tell us what you do. Uh, I teach at Rutgers University where Michael's a student. Okay. <laughs> now, are, are you proud of him having done this Cheating 101 book? I would say I'm proud of him, but I don't object to his right to do it. But you must object to cheating, do you? I object to cheating, certainly of the type that we've heard described here by uh, Donna and Rebecca. I think there are certain forms of cheating that the, uh, whether it be Rutgers or any other institution, they need to take some responsibility for, you know, poorly proctored exams, teachers who see the cheating occur and don't do anything about it, administrators who learn about it and decide not to pursue it. Okay. So do you, uh, what do you think, though, about this 80%? I mean, what, what 
uh, you think that it's the school's responsibility to kind of to to bring that down through better proctoring and stuff like that, or right to bring it down? They'll never get it to zero. I mean, it's simply the way our society is. I think that's a goal. You know, would be foolish to strive for, but certainly to reduce it from the level it's at currently. So, uh, to help students like Rebecca, perhaps who feel very strongly about not cheating, but get themselves in a situation where they know the GPA that they get is going to determine what college they get to go to. They see everybody else around them cheating, and they feel compelled to do the same, even though they'd rather not. Okay. Do you? What do you think this says about like the moral fiber in our society? I mean, do you think that we need to, you know, is there is there something very basic that's not happening that needs to happen to get people to start being a little more honest? We, we've done some research that's tried to understand how cheating has changed <laughs> over the years, and although the research is not quite complete yet. It certainly suggests that there's not a lot more cheating going on today than there has been over the last 20 or 30 years of data that we have. I think what's different is that... I heard different statistics on that. I heard that it's gone way up, but anyway. I think just about every study that's been done shows a slight increase after the Vietnam era and not much more after that. But uh, one thing that has dramatically changed certainly is student attitudes towards cheating. Uh, <coughs> I think students 20, 30 years ago would cheat, but admit that they were doing something wrong, but for various reasons, go ahead and do it. I think today, as you've heard from several people on the panel and several people in the audience, students don't even consider it wrong anymore in many cases. Okay. Speaking of, thanks a lot. Speaking of considering it wrong or not, what do you, what do you guys think about that? Do you, do you feel like, I mean, when, and Donna, when you're talking to these students, do you feel like most of them, do they, they know that it's wrong, right, when they do it? Or <coughs> Most students do know it's wrong. Um, it's whether or not they think it's serious enough to be kicked out of school. Um, that's basically the issue. Uh, there's some students that will go ahead and admit that they, they did something wrong. Um, I just think that it's, it's so important for all of us to be talking about this issue. Um, at, in, at the college age, beyond, before, I mean, I just think it's a, a very important issue to discuss, and I'm glad we're doing this today, and we're hearing different views. Okay, one more quick question for you, Michael. All these elaborate things, like, you know, going to Radio Shack, buying the thing for the year, doing all that stuff, wouldn't it be easier sometimes just to study? The old-fashioned way, studying, you know. <laughs> we used to do that back in the old days. <laughs> in many cases, uh, you know, to be honest with you, yeah, it probably would be, but I think a lot of students... I, don't, I really don't feel a lot of students go into a test totally blank. They have done uh, you know, some degree of studying, and if they are going to cheat, they put that on the back burner as an insurance policy. I just wondered if they didn't just think it was more fun, the cheating thing, well, I, getting you know, away with something. You know, there is a certain thrill that students get out of it, too, as he said earlier. Okay. When we come back, we're going to see if my term paper is ready yet, and we're going to see how good it is. We'll be right back. For free tickets to the show, write to Jane Pratt, care of Lifetime Television, 34-12, 36th Street, Astoria, New York, 11106. Or call Giles at area code 718-706-5273. You'll love his accent. about cheating and you know only 30 percent of high school students cheated back in the 40s and today it's about 70 percent so what I want to know is people up on the panel do you think that cheating is going to actually decrease now in the 90s was cheating part of this whole 80s me decade Michael Milken thing or do you do you think it's going to go down now Michael what do you think uh, I think you might see a slight increase in the 90s um, An increase. Uh, I mean, a slight decrease in the 90s. Because I know it would help your book sales there if it <laughs> increased, but uh, you think it's going to go down a little bit? I think it's going to go down a okay. little bit. Okay. Yeah. And, Jimmy, do you think that part of the reason um, that cheating is so rampant is because it's kind of cool? I mean, it sure seems like in this audience today, the general consensus is that it's, it's a cool thing to cheat. Well, it seems that today, more than ever, people are more success-orientated and they're goal-orientated, and it's just the most important thing is to, to get to where you want to go and no one really questions how you get there, as long as you get there, mm -hmm. you know. And in, in my in my incidents at, at Stanford, um, 
the honor code states that when, in, a, in a test situation that there's, there are no proctors. The teacher is not allowed by the honor code to be in the room. You can take your test. You can go to the library with it. You can go sit outside with it. You can go on a road trip if you're on, you know, for football. You can take it with you. And so really, you know, the honor is, is, is the key issue. And if there is no honor, so to speak, then cheating is as easy as, you know, just if studying at home. So, so you're saying that you don't really buy this whole thing that it's the fault of, uh, of the proctors for not watching out for people and stuff like that. You're saying you think people should have their own sense of honor and well, follow that? That's, that's the true nature of the honor code. There are no proctors in our exams. And, and people rely on each other, like Rebecca. If, if I were to cheat in a final exam blatantly, I would be turned in by other students at Stanford, I can tell you that. But it's the situations where you're at home doing a problem set, um, smaller situations where cheating is much more rampant. Okay, so yeah, so like those three guys in the SATs were relying on Rebecca to to uh, to turn them in. What do, what do you think? Um, I report I support Rebecca 100 percent because um, I just think cheating is wrong, and I think it's a representation of how immoral our society is today. And I I really admire you for doing what you did, and I stand behind you. 100%. And I think more people should do what you did. Because if one person gets away with it, everybody thinks that they're, they, they can just do it. And that's the thing. All right. Thank you. Michael, go ahead. <laughs> Michael, go ahead and respond to that. I have something to say that's been bugging me all day. I don't, I don't know if you know this. I don't know if you people know this. It's been bugging me all morning. Um, the president of Stanford University, who, who suspended Jim, was later run out of Stanford on a rail because he was maintaining a yacht with college funds, with state funds and things like that. And, and the principal of Rebecca's school was changing students' grades. You know this for a fact? Yeah, yeah. It was in the Wall Street Journal. Okay. So not, not the best role models. The other thing I have noticed, too, though, up here on the panel, and it kind of seems to be in the audience, is that it's the guys that are cheating and the girls that are standing up for honesty. It does, that's the way it seems to be breaking down. I'm just making an observation. What do you think? See, I don't see how these two guys could promote cheating because promote cheating is pr promoting ignorance. Oh, that's right. ah. It's anti-productive. Okay. And, and what happens when, they ha when you're walking into a career setting and they have these high expectations of you, how are you supposed to perform? And when they find out you're a fake? I don't, I, don't, I don't really see, okay. I don't see myself as promoting cheating. I just see myself as being the, well, I'm making, I'm also making money on it, so what, Do I'm you making, think that they're, I'm making money on. honestly. Yeah, you are, I know, you sold, what, 38,000 copies for $10 I'm making money each honestly, or so. You, okay, wait, 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 you don't have the mic anymore, so anybody. he can they can't hear you out there. But anyway, you um, now, do you think that, in, in terms of what he was saying, do you, do you feel like there are good things that you can learn from cheating? Do you think there are good things that can come out of it? Good does it teach you to be... Cheating? Yeah. I no, mean, aside no. from the end product, I mean, does it teach you to be more creative or, or what? I mean, you know, like uh, Mike stated earlier, that, you know, you take advantage of your resources. If those are the resources you, you know, want to pick and choose from, that's up to you. But I don't really think there's anything tangibly great that comes out of cheating. I, okay, I it's just good for you because you wrote a book on it that's, that's selling. Okay, you, you said you had an experience with this SAT thing yourself. What, yes, what I, was it? Yes, I did. And I just want to ask Rebecca, what do you think of this? Um, my name is Dana, and I had my girlfriend take my SATs for me. Now, I got 770 on it myself, but um, having her take it for me got me 300 extra points, got me at a great institution. I'm a senior, graduating senior with a 3-3. Three, three. Um, what, what if they're watching right now? What if those teachers giving you 3-3s three, are watching? Do you care? Well, the re how I got that 3-3 three, three is was hanging out with my boy over here, Mike, because um, <laughs> we cheat too. So I want to know <laughs> what you think of me because the SATs aren't geared to like inner city students, which I okay, am. Okay, we're going to get the answer to that when we come back. Thanks for your story. We'll be right back. You know, I also work on a magazine you should be reading. It's called Sassy, and it's on sale. 12 issues for 10 bucks. Call 1-800-96-SASSY to subscribe. Um, term paper that I ordered at the beginning of the show and 
Well, it, it looks like a term paper, and I, I did get it in less than an hour, which is better than pulling an all-nighter, I guess, but it cost me $115, and I definitely did not learn as much as if I had written it myself. Time to go. Thanks to our guests. See you later. Now, stay tuned for Shopping with a Twist. This store is giving money away. Shop on Supermarket Suite, next, only on Lifetime.